Let's see what we have here. Okay, this is probably the least impressive bit. That's a cheap looking cage on that derailleur. Still, it's plenty stiff. There's enough metal there. Looks very much like a 10 speed Shimano derailleur. And this has got SRAM all over it. This um, cable fulcrum arrangement here is totally SRAM. Upper pivots in line, upper jockey wheels in line with the pivot. There's no spring in the upper knuckle there. It attaches, this is exactly like SRAM, except this is the disappointing part. This is in plastic, so it's definitely a potential weak spot. Might even be able to use a metal one off a SRAM derailleur. Cage it appears to be aluminium. So these are a ball bearing poly. With just little shims over the top. A little bit of slop in that bearing. Direction arrow marked on there for some reason. I suppose there's a slight bit of profile on that tooth. Upper and lower teeth are the same thickness, and there's no lateral float on the upper pulley, so it doesn't have that feature. It's a very stiff spring on this, so that should make for good accuracy. There's a uh, A little Allen head screw in there, retaining the cage and the spring. Two and a half mil hex for upper and lower and B screw. Unfortunately, they didn't um, carry that through to the front derailleur, which has got ugly old Phillip heads. Now the levers are interesting. They look very Shimano. Get three clicks out of it that way. Single downshifts of course being an escapement mechanism. Um, downshifts as in releasing the cable, not you might regard what's happening at the drivetrain. Um, Yeah, so it's the lever is basically Shimano on the outside and SRAM on the inside. That mechanism in there, which is kind of covered in grease, is pure SRAM but actuated via Shimano's lever arrangement. Um, there's a lockout to prevent shifting while braking, but that's just this little duver here, so a little bit of fine wire wrapped around there to there to hold that down, that will enable shifting while braking if you like. I'll be doing that because I find that to be a feature, not a bug. Particularly with the uh, front brake on the right, braking to a stop and shifting to a lower gear with one movement is nice. 
So the hoods are of quite reasonable quality. I was afraid from the photos that they wouldn't be this nice, but they're pretty decent. Of course, the question remains whether we'll ever be able to obtain spares under the hood. It's got SRAM written all over it, where this cover forms the edge of the brake cable groove there, it's pure SRAM. We've got a couple of uh, directions for the gear cable, outside of the bars and the inside. And the cable comes out pretty much exactly like a SRAM one, which means it tends to get a bit curled from being forced through there. And it also means it's almost impossible to reuse an old cable because pushing a cut end through here is a mission you don't want to attempt. Let's see how difficult it is to put a fresh one. Make sure it's fully released. Yep. Can't quite see it. I'll just fumble around for it. it. Takes a bit of a push. But there we go, it's not too bad. But yeah, there'll be extreme difficulty trying to reuse an old cable. This is pure SRAM. And the way the cable drum doesn't have a groove in it, the groove is in the housing around it. It's SRAM. The way this ratchet works, SRAM. Even the way this pivot pin is retained with one of these little plastic screws like that, SRAM again. Looks like Shimano on the outside there. But overall, I would say. Extremely good value for money. Some of the plastic parts, you know, that looks a little bit cheap, but who cares? It's under the hood. You can feel it isn't entirely precise, but it's good enough. And for 200 Australian, for all of this, it's um, mightily impressive. Stay tuned and I'll install this gear on one of my bikes and we'll see how it goes.